For many modern gardeners, compost piles are almost a ritual. We pile up scraps, turn them, wait weeks or months, and hope for rich, dark humus to nourish our plants. But for thousands of years, farmers across the globe manage fertile fields without ever touching a compost pile. From the fertile plains of Mesopotamia to the rice terraces of Southeast Asia, ancient farmers relied on methods that worked with nature, not against it. Understanding these methods reveals a simpler, more efficient way to feed your soil, and it might just save you time, effort and space in your garden. How ancient farmers let nature do the work instead of forcing decomposition. Ancient agriculture depended heavily on mulching and layering organic matter directly on the soil surface. Leaves, straw, crop residues and even animal manure were applied where crops would grow. This created a living mulch that slowly broke down in place, feeding microbes directly at the roots rather than in a separate pile. The soil itself became a dynamic composting environment, rich with worms, fungi and beneficial bacteria that converted plant material into nutrients gradually. By integrating organic matter into the soil ecosystem, farmers avoided the inefficiencies of hauling material to a pile and waiting for it to decompose elsewhere. Why crop rotation and intercropping were ancient soil superchargers? Farmers did not rely on compost alone because their planting strategies naturally replenish nutrients. Alternating nitrogen-fixing legumes with nutrient-hungry grains or planting complementary crops together ensured that the soil stayed balanced. Deep-rooted plants brought minerals up from lower layers, while shallow-rooted crops prevented erosion and retained topsoil. The natural cycling of plant matter and root exudates fed the microbial community in a way that a compost pile alone cannot replicate. This dynamic system maintained fertility year after year without the need for piles or bins. How animal integration kept soils naturally fertile. Livestock played a critical role in ancient farms. Animals grazed, trampled and deposited manure directly onto fields, mixing it naturally with the soil. Seasonal pasturing returned nutrients exactly where they were needed, eliminating the labour of collecting, storing and composting. In regions from ancient Rome to early China, small pens or rotational grazing systems ensured that every square foot of farmland received organic inputs in a controlled, natural manner. The soil remained alive and crops thrived with minimal human intervention beyond planting and harvesting. You know, modern gardeners can absolutely apply the same principles today. Instead of focusing solely on compost piles, it's quite effective to adopt layered mulching, cover crops, and the direct integration of organic matter into your soil beds. Leaves, straw, shredded garden waste, and even food scraps can all be placed directly on the soil, where they'll decompose naturally over time. Cover crops like clover, vetch or buckwheat are fantastic because they add nutrients, protect the soil from erosion and stimulate microbial life. By letting decomposition happen right where your plants grow, nutrients become immediately available to the roots rather than just sitting in a separate heap. So, let's talk about some practical steps for replacing your compost pile with in-place soil feeding. Begin by preparing your beds with a thin layer of coarse organic matter. Then top it with something finer, like leaves or straw. Plant your crops or cover crops right on top of the layer. Give everything a light watering to kickstart microbial activity 
and just let the natural cycle break down the material. For vegetable gardens after harvest, simply chop up the crop residues and leave them in place to enrich the soil. And if you've got livestock or chickens, allowing them to graze in rotation will deposit manure and stimulate soil life directly where it's needed. Now, why is living soil more efficient than compost piles, you might wonder? Well, a compost pile requires turning, monitoring, and often the addition of water or balancing carbon and nitrogen ratios. Living soil, on the other hand, does all of this naturally. Microbes, worms and fungi actively process organic matter right where it's needed, feeding your plants continuously, rather than just in batches. By keeping the soil covered and rich with organic inputs, gardeners are actually mimicking those ancient systems that sustained civilizations for centuries. The soil itself becomes the composting ecosystem, dramatically reducing both labour and time. You know, ancient practices really do prevent problems that modern gardeners often struggle with. Compost piles, for instance, can become anaerobic, attract pests, or, well, emit some rather unpleasant odours if they're not managed properly. But, in contrast, when you use layered mulches and integrate organic matter right into the soil, you actually reduce these risks. Plant roots, soil fauna and microbial communities all work together to keep decomposition balanced. Nutrients are released slowly which helps prevent over-fertilization or salt buildup. Water retention improves naturally, and over time the soil structure just gets stronger and stronger. The end result is a self-sustaining system that really does mirror how ancient farmers managed to grow food so efficiently. So, why is this approach better for sustainability and, you know, backyard resilience? Well, reducing dependence on separate compost piles means you use less energy, water and labour. It's just simpler. This method encourages a closed-loop system where nothing leaves the garden unnecessarily. Leaves from trees, grass clippings and even your kitchen scraps can all contribute directly to soil fertility. And over time, your garden develops a resilient soil ecosystem that's capable of supporting all sorts of diverse plants with minimal outside inputs. What does history teach us about working with nature rather than against it? Ancient farmers understood that soil is alive. It's not just a medium for plants, you know. They designed systems that fed microbes, worms and fungi alongside their crops, creating an ecosystem that provided fertility without constant human labour. Modern gardeners can absolutely replicate this philosophy layer, integrate and plant strategically. The soil does most of the heavy lifting, and gardeners can focus more on guidance rather than force. So, if you want to master the ancient wisdom that feeds the soil naturally, do consider subscribing to Hydro Haven. And, hey, share this guide with fellow gardening enthusiasts and history buffs. Let's help spread the knowledge that the smartest gardens really do work with nature, not against it.